This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. Reb Shlomo was a chassid of the Helega Baal Shem Tov. And despite being blessed with a great deal of wealth and riches, one thing Reb Shlomo and his wife were not blessed with was children. And every time that Shlomo would come by the Helega Baal Shem Tov, he would ask for a bracha, a blessing for children. And the Baal Shem Tov would shrug his shoulders and say, Shlomo, I'm so sorry, but the gates of heaven are closed for you. But Shlomo didn't give up. And year after year, he would come to the Baal Shem Tov and ask for a bracha for children. And one year, the Baal Shem Tov said, Shlomo, something has changed, and I can give you a blessing for children, but it comes with a very harsh condition. Shlomo said, Nu Rebbe, my wife and I will do anything to have children. The Baal Shem Tov said, If you agree to lose all of your wealth, you will be blessed with a child. Shlomo agreed on the spot, but the Baal Shem Tov knew better, and he said, Shlomo, you have to go home first. Discuss this with your wife. If she agrees, Come back here, and I'll give you the bracha. So Shlomo went home, and he told his wife, and she said, hurry back to the Hele Gabal Shem Tov and tell him right away, I agree wholeheartedly. I'm willing to give up all of our riches just to have a child. And so Shlomo went back as quickly as he could to Mejibuz to the Hele Gabal Shem Tov, and he received the long-awaited blessing. And on his way home, he stopped by an inn to rest, and he was talking with some of his fellow travelers who were passing through his city. And without introducing himself, he asked, what's the latest news? And they all said, haven't you heard about the great Reb Shlomo, the wealthy Jew? He lost his entire fortune. His entire fleet of ships loaded with tons of wood was lost at sea. And Shlomo had a huge smile on his face because he said to himself, so the bracha of the Baal Shem Tov is already coming true. And he was so excited as he got closer and closer to home. People met him and they said, Shlomo, we're so sorry. There was a fire and it burned down all of your property. You've lost everything, Shlomo. But Shlomo, instead of being depressed, had never been happier in his entire life. He was so happy. He said the blessing had come sooner than I ever even imagined. And neither Reb Shlomo nor his wife complained about losing anything. All they were thinking about was that within a year, they would have a child. And sure enough, a year later, Reb Shlomo's wife gave birth to a baby boy. <laughs> but at this point, Reb Shlomo was reduced to begging for money. He had absolutely nothing, just the shirt on his back, and he needed to provide for his wife and his new son. So he joined a group of beggars that were going from town to town, and eventually, they ended up in the town of Mejibuz. One of the beggars says to the other, Let's go to the Baal Shem Tov's house of study. He always gives generously. And so the group got in line in the courtyard of the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov was the one who handed out the tzedakah personally. And when the Baal Shem Tov saw Shlomo, he whispered to him, Come to my study later. I need to talk with you. Shlomo was very excited because the Baal Shem Tov had recognized him, even in his tattered clothes. And being a beggar, the Baal Shem Tov still saw him. And when Shlomo came to the Baal Shem Tov later in the day, the Baal Shem Tov said, Shlomo, it's true. You were meant to lose everything and be in poverty. But after being such a wealthy Jew and supporting so many people for so many years, you deserve at least a dignified level of poverty. So I want you to travel to the town of Krim. There, your fortunes will change. Bracha, v'atzlacha, v'zai gesund. And so, Shlomo headed out on the road to the town of Krim. He was very excited. And when he arrived, he went to the local shul, where everyone was very kind to him. And the attendant there, introduced Shlomo to a wealthy Jew who could host him for Shabbos. This wealthy Jew lived in a magnificent home. It was a beautiful home filled with light and joy. And the host spared no effort trying to make Shlomo comfortable. He made sure that he had a bath. And got him new clothes and new shoes. And gave him money even before Shabbos so that all Shabbos he wouldn't have to think about how he would get along after Shabbos was over. 
And then for all of the meals of Shabbos, he served a huge feast, and Shlomo was enjoying every second. But as soon as Shabbos ended, Shlomo noticed that his host went from being so happy to being very sad and somewhat depressed. And Shlomo said to him, listen, you've been so kind to me. You've given me so much. I'm sorry to see you in such pain. Can you please share your problems with me? Maybe I can help. The wealthy Jew said that he had a daughter who had a terrible health problem, and none of the doctors seemed to be able to help her, and he didn't know what to do. So Shlomo very excitedly said, I know someone who can help you. In the town of Mezhibuz, there's a great tzaddik, the Helega Baal Shem Tov, and he's helped many, many people. Come with me. I'm one of his Hasidim. Let's go and ask the Baal Shem Tov if he can help you. So the rich man, his spirits were lifted, and Reb Shlomo and the wealthy Jew went to Mezhibuz, where they went to the Baal Shem Tov. And after hearing the problem, the Baal Shem Tov instructed his Gabai to go the four of them to the rich man's town. And when they arrived at the town, the Baal Shem Tov told his Gabai, Rabbi Tzvi Sofer, to go to the mikvah and declare, the Baal Shem Tov has demanded that you leave this place. Everybody was looking at one another, like, what's going on? But the Gabai did as he was told. He went into the mikvah. And as soon as he uttered those words, a voice was heard from the mikvah. The Besht has power only in Poland, but not here in Ukraine. When Reb Tzvi related what the voice had said, the Baal Shem Tov handed him his walking stick. And he said, go back to the mikvah and tell the spirit that if it refuses, you will strike the water with my stick. And so Reb Tzvi went back to the mikvah and he told the spirit and the spirit said again, I won't listen to you. And so he struck the water. And it turned blood red. Then the Baal Shem Tov said that the mikvah be completely cleaned, scrubbed from top to bottom, and filled again. And from that moment on, the rich man's daughter had a complete refuah shlema, fully recovered. The rich man was stunned. And he came back to the Baal Shem Tov with Shlomo. He said, Rebbe, Rebbe, what can I do for you after what you've done for me and my family? And the Baal Shem Tov said, I need nothing. However, please tell me, how did you become so wealthy? So the wealthy Jew said, I used to own a small dock at the harbor. And one day, there was a big storm. And the winds blew up. A fleet of boats filled with logs into my dock. I tried to find out who the boats belonged to, but nobody knew. And eventually, I sold the boats, and I sold the wood, and I made a fortune. The Baal Shem Tov simply nodded his head, and then pointed to Shlomo. And he said to the wealthy Jew, Those boats and logs belonged to this man here, Shlomo. They were yours, and you were free to take the money. However, even though the money is yours, part of that should be paid back to Shlomo. And of course, the wealthy Jew was just so happy that he knew where these boats came from because he felt a little uncomfortable selling somebody else's property. But here the Baal Shem Tov had told him that the money was not meant for Shlomo and the wealthy Jew was welcome to keep it. And the wealthy Jew, of course, was also happy that his daughter had been healed thanks to the Heidegger Baal Shem Tov. So he took one third of the money and he gave it to Shlomo. And Shlomo was a little embarrassed to even take the money because he knew he had to deal with the Baal Shem Tov. And Shlomo could now live in peace, supporting his wife and family. And eventually they had more children and eventually grandchildren, all thanks to the blessing of the Heilige Baal Shem Tov. <laughs> Lie, 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 lie,
Thank you so much for listening to these stories. If you know somebody who still hasn't heard of the Hasidic Story Project, you know what they're missing out on. Please make sure to share a link with them, either from the website, HasidicStory.com, or from wherever you subscribe to your podcasts. And of course, make sure to leave us a review and five stars. It makes a big difference in the charts and more people will see the podcast and be able to listen to it. Thank you so much for listening. And I look forward to sharing our next story together.